OBS has updated quite a bit over the last year or two, and there has been a major update to GPU encoding implementations as well, so naturally it was time for an update. Not much of the formal methodology from my OBS Masterclass has really changed, but my settings recommendations have. So let's take a look after a word from this episode's sponsor. TubeBuddy is the best tool you can get to manage your YouTube channel. You can update videos in bulk, optimize your SEO, syndicate to social media, back up your metadata, and more, all with a simple browser extension. Head to eposvox.com slash TubeBuddy to learn more and download it for free. This video will serve as a sort of update to my OBS Masterclass Episodes 119, What Bitrate Do I Use? 122, streaming and recording in different qualities at the same time, and 142, how to get the best possible settings. I'm not going to rehash everything said in those videos, and I still recommend watching them if you're a beginner, but there are some details that, I, that I'm updating here from each of these. I'm going to assume you know how to use the basic settings and have already learned to manage your scenes and sources, as I have thoroughly covered all of that in previous episodes of the Masterclass. First, let's quickly discuss the new NVENC, or NVIDIA's GPU encoder, and how that compares to your other encoding options. Traditionally, the recommendation has been to use X264 software encoding for live streaming, as it looked better at lower bit rates, and NVENC for recording, since it looks just fine at high bit rates. But as of OBS version 23, my recommendation has changed. For most people running a GTX 1060 or newer graphics card, using NVENC to encode for both streaming and recording is the way to go. OBS 23 has updated their implementation of GPU encoding for NVIDIA hardware, which improves performance quite a bit, and the 20 series of graphics cards increases quality even more. I have multiple videos explaining these updates and differences in depth, which will be linked in the video description if you do want to learn more of the nerdy details. My recommendation for how to decide what you use is this. If you can run X264 for your live stream at fast or medium CPU usage preset, typically this would require a dual PC streaming configuration, then you might as well use that. But if you are forced to run it at faster or any higher usage presets for X264, then run NVENC. It'll be better quality and not hurt your system performance quite as much. For recording, you might as well just always use NVENC anyway. If you're on a lower end system with an Intel integrated GPU or are desperate to reclaim some performance, you can try Intel QuickSync, but in recent, in recent OBS versions combined with updated drivers, this doesn't even work half the time and the quality is equivalent to X264 very fast or super fast and I've just generally not had good luck with it. As far as AMD's GPU encoder goes, it's bad. Some people can only get it to work by encoding to H.265 with it, which limits you to only using it for recording, not streaming, and I just generally can't recommend it. This isn't an NVIDIA bias or anything, both in my testing and constant feedback from viewers after previously suggesting this as an option, I can't keep recommending AMD's coder, encoder in good faith. It's actually gotten worse with the newer GPUs. Sad. So what do I recommend if you're streaming and recording at the same time? Well, easy. Both NVENC if you're on a single PC setup. If you're on a dual PC setup and can push X264 to medium, then go ahead. Anything lower than medium just isn't worth it and can lead both to issues for you actually being able to push it consistently because it can fluctuate based on what game you're playing and background processes on your streaming rig and for some mobile viewers to actually decode the stream due to some of the flags that get enabled on these slower presets. Obviously push the highest bitrate you can within your connection's bandwidth. My video on bitrate considerations still covers that very well. You can sort of now push up to 8 megabits per second to Twitch, but this isn't officially supported yet and you risk losing trans transcoding or other weird things happening to your stream, so your mileage may vary. For streaming, there's not much to change. Keyframe set to 2, bitrate is normal. For NVENC, check Psycho Visual Tuning and leave Look Ahead unchecked. Set B frames to 2. For the quality dropdown, if you're on a dual PC setup, you can use max quality, which enables two-pass encoding, but if you're streaming from a single PC, you'll likely need to leave it on quality for best performance. For recording NVENC settings, mostly the same thing is set up. These days I prefer using CQP values instead of variable bitrate or constant bitrate values. CQP are constant quality presets instead of just limiting bitrate. So for 1080p footage, a CQP value of around 14 is considered visually lossless, and for most purposes, that's perfect, although 18 through 22 is a bit more sane selection if you're recording long stream sessions to save on space. 
With CQP, and the same for CRF with X264, lower numbers means higher quality. So zero is lossless, 60 or so is lowest quality. When recording, just try to avoid recording to the same hard drive that your games run from, and you're good to go. I recommend setting up a main mix audio track for your stream with the stream appropriate audio bitrate and then setting your extra multi-track tracks to the full 320 kilobit per second for higher quality editing of your VOD later. You'll thank me if you ever go to actually like tweak your audio. This wasn't a revolutionary change and I felt the original how-to aspects of the Masterclass episode still applied enough that I didn't want to outright replace them and make you listen to the same steps again. But I had enough requests to update things after the InVink change, so here it is. If you're looking to learn how all this works, the description will be filled with links to your extra videos giving you every detail you can adman ad imagine, not advantage. Words are hard. As always, I'm Evil's Vox here to make tech easier and more fun but words more difficult sometimes, hit the like button, get subscribed. I'll see you next time.